Fox host Tucker Carlson might have just inadvertently made the case for vaccination against COVID-19. So somebody who knows him told me, and I, I should be initially getting your take on this, that getting COVID emasculated him. It changed him. It, we, it feminized him. It weakened him as a man. Do you think that's... Well, I think he was very seriously ill. Yo, for uh, sure he was. And I think... I mean, one, of, one of the things we have learned from COVID is people who are 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds overweight uh, tend to have fared very badly. Sure. Now, we don't talk about it But much. the virus itself... This is true. Does tend to take away the life force in some people. I know this. I mean, it does yes. feminize people. I, I'm, no one ever says that, but it, it's true. Okay. Well then. Um, now this is a discussion on Boris Johnson. He's obviously speaking with Nigel Farage. Uh, two, uh, you know, terrible people. Actually, three terrible people. Uh, but uh, I mean, what a weirdo kind of discussion. Oh, uh, you know, the, the COVID-19. Uh, uh, you know, what if it, um, I heard that it feminizes you, uh, you know? Uh, that it uh, turns you into, uh, like, a woman or something. I mean, uh, that's very disturbing. Uh, for one, that's not necessarily true. Uh, so, I know, uh, and there's uh, transgender people will be like, wait, wait, what? Does what? No, it does not. It does not. So, Get your vaccine. Do not get COVID-19. Um, but it is a weird statement. It is weird. And here's the thing. Why does everything have to be couched from the far right in, in weirdo masculinity? You know what I'm saying? Like, like oh, you know, we got to worry about men. We got to talk about the men. We got masculinity. We, you know, men, uh, the problem with men being feminized. We got too many feminized men. Uh, no, what we need to have is we need to have masculine men, super masculine men with big, rippling, sweaty man chest. Yeah, that's what a man is supposed to be about. Yeah. Dude, a lot of these people seem to spend a lot of time, like, thinking about dudes. I, I, I'm just saying, like, okay, okay, look. It's 2021. You can be gay. That's totally fine. Like, come out of the closet. It's totally acceptable. This is, you know, hey, hey we're a very accepting bunch. Uh, come out. Just come out. Like, if you're constantly thinking about men, totally fine. Just come out and be honest with us and yourself. You want to wear dresses? Totally fine. You want to be a little feminized? Totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm not going to judge you. Nobody here is going to judge you. It's just like they're, they just have this weird, bizarre fixation on a certain brand of so-called masculinity. Uh, and, and it's just really weird, you know, on the far right. I mean, again, you watch that. They're always focused really weirdly on, on, on men, uh, masculinity, uh, you know, ball size, whatever. Uh, and so it, it's weird. Now, think about it this way, though. Um, if this does help get, you know, people get vaccinated against COVID-19, then I'm well, sure I'll take it, right? I mean, like some weirdo, you know, alt writers watching this was like, oh my God, maybe I'll get a COVID-19 vaccine. Like, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Not, not exactly where I want to go, um, but hell, whatever gets you vaccinated, I guess that'll work. Uh, I'll take it. Um, but here's the thing. There is a little bit of a truth to the idea that COVID can affect uh, men in a certain way. Now, again, this isn't, you know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to say that, like, oh, no, uh, it attacks your masculinity uh, and it makes you feminine. No, 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 no. There's no truth to that at all. But it can erect. Erect. <laughs> I just gave it away. It can affect something that people would consider to be a very masculine trait. Uh, and that is, of course, your erections. Um, I know, gave it away there a little bit. Couldn't help myself. Got a little too excited. Um, no, earlier this year, two studies came out that said that men who have had COVID are about six to six and a half times more likely, I'm sorry, five to six and a half more times likely to develop erectile dysfunction. So one of them was published uh, in the World Journal of Men's Health. And uh, another was in the March publication in the medical journal Andrology. Now, uh, the Andrology uh, survey was actually just, uh, 
conducted online uh, between April 7th and May 4th, 2020 in, in Italy. At that time, Italy was hit very, very hard with COVID-19. Uh, and this survey, which was among 100 sexually active men. So understand, these are small sizes. Um, uh, again, <laughs> nothing to get worried about, guys, uh, with the small size. But um, no, it, it, it looked at uh, sexually active men, and 25 of whom who had tested for positive for COVID-19 and found that the prevalence of erectile dysfunction was significantly higher, about 28% among the 25 who had tested positive for COVID-19 compared to the 75 who had not. Those who had COVID-19 were over 5.6 times more likely to have erectile dysfunction, and those who had ED were over 5.2 more times likely to have had COVID-19. So, you know, hey, look, uh, you get COVID, you know, as a young man, uh, or even as an older man, you, you are, you're possibly more likely to end up having some, some problems down the line. Because, and, and, and look, uh, it's more likely to happen with severe cases. But what happens is that COVID-19 can get into, into that area and damage blood vessels, making it hard to, well, get hard. I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's a scientific term. But I, I can imagine how that particular situation might be a little bit emasculating. Uh, not to mention, of course, the other stuff that COVID-19 can do to you um, that we don't even know. And so that's not counting death. We're talking about lung COVID. We're talking about uh, organ damage, heart, heart problems, lung problems, and again, uh, ED. And so, you know, I think that's a good case for you to get vaccinated um, because the vaccine has been proven to be safe and effective at preventing severe COVID-19 symptoms and death. And so, you know, uh, safe and effective, Nicki Minaj's friends, cousins, balls, notwithstanding. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.